Kendo Podcast episode 146. In this episode, I want to talk about how to empower the Kensaki of your Shinai. Kendo Podcast by Hiro Mafuji from kendoguy.com. Thank you for listening. This podcast is about Japanese martial arts kendo for kendo lovers and supported by kendo enthusiasts through patreon.com. Thank you for your support, guys. Please visit kendoguy.com for more kendo information and how to support kendoguy.com. Welcome to Kendo Podcast episode 146. Now, uh, I'm still kind of st- uh, still sick uh, from my <clears throat> asthma, so like you heard, uh, I have to c- clear my throat all the time. I'm not still feeling good, so I'm sorry about that. Uh, okay, so before I get into this uh, book and you know, how to empower the Kensai Gibbs Shinai, uh, please go to uh, the link below, uh, somewhere around here. I want you to vote uh, out of two questions I'm asking you because I, this, uh, this will, the result of this voting will affect the uh, uh, topic that I'm going to do, I'm going to work on. Uh, in the uh, membership site at patreon.com slash kendo for life so please participate that uh, if you haven't now uh, I want to talk about this how to empower our Kensaki Uh, and this was in Kendo Jirai number 548 2018 or I think 2019 uh, February issue and the uh, it's by Kobayashi Sensei, Kunio Kobayashi Sensei. Now, you know, Kensaki, the tip of the sword, right? The, uh, it's always uh, difficult to have the strong Kensaki. Uh, the, you know, powerful Kensaki that overwhelms your opponent. This is uh, kind of very hard. Uh, to achieve, you know, it's you can't just do it. You have to train for it. You have to train hard. You have to train with a lot of people, and then probably you can achieve such stuff. Now, <clears throat> long story short, uh, from his uh, Kobe Sensei's article in Kendo Jidai, uh, you really have to train. And I'm gonna uh, talk. I'm gonna uh, share the elements of. Uh, such uh, you know a powerful Kensaki how you can achieve that kind of stuff uh, towards the end so please listen to the podcast until the end all right so powerful Kensaki what what does it let's define powerful Kensaki so the powerful Kensaki is that you feel fear from it so you feel pressure so when your opponent has a powerful Kensaki, you feel some kind of pressure from it. Okay, you feel like you cannot do anything. Oh, okay, now you know you're you're on me. If I move, probably you're gonna hit me. So that kind of feeling uh, you're gonna have right in front of this powerful Kensaki. Like uh, if I share my experience that. Uh, with the late Murayama sensei we were doing Jigeiko. I, I don't know how old I was. I was pre- probably a high school student. And he he is he was the uh, uh, all, all, all 8th Dan champion. Uh, the champion of all 8th Dan tournament. Of course he is really, you know, is a way above me, right? So, of course you can, uh, I couldn't beat him at all. I knew that. But and then I felt fear, like, oh, he's going to kill me. You know, that kind of fear. It's a Shina. He's not going to kill me. But you, you, you're scared of it. You're scared of that Kensaki. It looked like a real huge, like, you know, it's a lot. It's a lot. I thought it was a lot. You know, of course, his, his Shina was normal Shina, but it looked real big. And I felt fear. I was scared of him. Because of that. So if you can feel in such, uh, you know, fear, we call it, oh, his Kensage is so powerful, you know. So uh, Kobayashi Sensei, uh, Kobayashi Sensei, Hayashi Sensei, 
uh, is I'm sorry, this <laughs> Hayashi Sensei is uh, talking about how powerful he, uh, he the powerful Kensaki that he encountered in his Kendo life, and he recalled that uh, you know these Sensei who were good at Shiai, he didn't think their Kensaki was so powerful, but energetic or vigorous or active so you know the Kensaki didn't have that such uh, you know, the, the strong the powerful uh, the Kensaki didn't have the power that gives you fear but probably moves around and then probably it will invite you and in, so they're gonna get you you know he didn't explain in detail but probably I guess uh, what that active or vigorous or energetic means not too sure but there were some senses he felt uh, Hayashi sensei felt fear by facing them just by facing them in Keiko uh, that was Narasaki Masahiko sensei and also Taniguchi Yasunori sensei both night now Hayashi sensei felt the Kensaki was so powerful that he had he thought he had to move the Kensaki right but and then he did Osae you know push the Kensaki down or Harai slap it away or Maki you know uh, but that none of these techniques worked and he felt like whatever he did to the Shunai nothing worked but just got hit and he also felt uh, those you know, strong, powerful Kensaki in Shiai. There are two people, Yamada Sensei, Yamada Hironori Sensei, is that right? Hironori Sensei, and uh, Shitaike Tetsuo Sensei. And uh, Shitaike Sensei, uh, was, uh, he fought in a like, university tournament when he was a university student. So Hayashi Sensei studied why uh, Yamada Sensei's Kensaki is such, you know, strong or powerful, you know, by watching the video of Shia, you know, with uh, Yamada Sensei. And he found out these four things, probably it's very useful for us to feel, you know, listen to. So Yamada Sensei's left heel faces towards the opponent. And he was ready to strike in any time, okay? And second, his kamae was stable with his lower back in. What lower back in means? Uh, basically, your butt is not sticking out. It's in. So he can go anytime he can go. I mean, even time he needs to. He needs to, right? So that's back you know you have to a lot of senses says you put your lower back in that's kind of key term koshio ireru is the japanese word i'm just kind of translating it directly so put your lower back in you know hip in so that's what it was and then third his left hand is in the center of the body and ready to skip and it is called tsuki gokoro. As you, kokoro is heart or you know, whatever. Uh, I will uh, have a link <laughs> to the uh, lecture of kokoro. But uh, tsuki gokoro is you always, okay, I'm going to tsuki. You have the feeling of I'm going to tsuki you. So <clears throat> everyone feels fear from tsuki. I mean, if you go strike, if you strike, you know, there's a tsuki waiting for you. You don't want to strike, you get, you know, you, you don't want to get stabbed, right? So you always have to have this feeling of tsuki, right? And his posture and shinai are harmonized. So that's what he found out from the video. Now, so what are those, you know, what are the elements or essence of powerful or strong kensaki? Now, f you have to be filled with, filled up with tsuki, you know, ki energy, inside energy, right? It's not, that I'm not talking about power but the energy you have inside you you have to fill up the energy and body and mind your body and your mind are ready to ski execute ski 
Okay, either you're gonna do it or not. You have to go, have the feeling of I'm going to skew. You know, you gotta be careful. Put pressure, and always your physically, your body is proceeds. You know, you're going forward. You never, never steps back. Never retreats. Of course, there's a retreat to set a trap as a trap. Oh, come forward, I'll get you, kind of thing. Or you're retreating, but your mind is still putting pressure. You know, so there's also, there's a uh, retreat going stepping backwards, <clears throat> but. Uh, you have to have this physical way to put pressure, which is going forward. Now, <clears throat> how do we achieve? How do we do we the method methodology? How how to achieve such great uh, power for Kensak? Now, uh, Hayashi Sensei is a is a professor and a scientific guy, so he really think it's it's need to be scientific, scientifically researched uh, but he this is his uh, hypothesis if you like <clears throat> your weight should be on the ball of the left big toe and this is a very important a lot of senses says that a lot of senses say you have to put the ball of the weight your weight on the ball of the left big toe a lot of senses says that, so it must be true, and I agree with it. Okay, now the left foot faces to your opponent, which is very important, and the left heel is should be lift uh, is up, and then the back of the knee should be straight. All right, you have to accomplish if you want to accomplish that, you cannot have wide stance. Okay, now. Make sure you put in your left hip, left joint. But you gotta be careful with this. If you have your left hip is already in, in your kamae, right, that will make your strike slower. I think this is really, this is an eye opener for me. You know, you, you try to have a good posture and then you, you have kind of, I try to have my left hip in. It's kind of locked there. And then I was thinking, I was wondering why my strike is kind of one step or one moment uh, slower than my opponent. You know, it's got gono sen kind of thing. Uh, you know, I couldn't go, I couldn't strike whenever I needed to. Well, you know, when I probably, <clears throat> I, I kind of didn't feel right. And then when I read this, one sentence and go oh probably that's why unfortunately i haven't been able to try this because of my <clears throat> uh asthma problem because i haven't done kinder for like an almost two and a half months so i i cannot say for sure but if you think this this might be your problem you should try that you have to unlock your left hip so i'm not saying stick your butt out but uh, if you if you uh, if you tend to put your left hip in, it's, it might be locked. So you have to release it a little bit, and then before you strike, it has to be in. Maybe you, know, you have to kind of uh, play around a little bit around there. Okay, so and then the left hand is lower than the belly button, and the right hand is very loose. Uh, it's not loose. Right hand shouldn't be loose. Loose as in, it should be relaxed, but not really loose like uh, you have to re-grab your uh, shinai, okay? So it's relaxed, and then you're grabbing your sword. Sometimes a lot of people are so kind of, kind of, their fingers are too loose. I think that's what I mean, that what, what it means, okay? And now the left hand's position is, it says lower than belly button. Now, <clears throat> Uh, if you're familiar with my uh, podcast or, or uh, videos on uh, YouTube, I found out <clears throat> a lot of people has higher belly, but you know, the, the, their belly button position is higher than Japanese ones. I think if you're Caucasian or you know some, I don't know, but Asian or Japanese maybe has a lower belly button. <laughs> That's what I have found out. 
because a lot of people when I say in front of your belly button where's your belly button it looks really high so it depends okay so don't worry about it too much but if your left hand is really high I'm sure your Kensaki doesn't have such power because your left hand you cannot use your left hand effectively that much I know of course depends on again your uh, body structure but uh, you can probably have to pre play around or talk to your teacher about the left hand position now the extension of the Kensaki is between the eyes or the left eye of your opponent Okay, extension so uh, a lot of senses says <clears throat> I'm gonna point at the throat uh, of your opponent right but extension of your sword should be between so again you have to play around now uh, you know this is uh, the word the words from from an eight nine sensei so he talks about the uh, these things at very high level so does if he says these things it uh, doesn't mean it's for everyone depends on your level it, they might not work so you have to find out on your own maybe sometimes and you can listen to what you know higher senses says and then figure out your own way okay but these are the finding findings from uh my reading uh of this uh, higher senses i don't know why i said kobayashi sensei higher senses article so i hope you enjoyed this uh, podcast and then I have a note for the uh, uh, Patreon members, Kindle for Life Club members. So uh, please uh, uh, make it, you know, you can print it out and you can take it with you to the dojo if you need to. All right. So thank you for watching and not watching, listening. And please do the do uh, you know, do the vote, voting stuff and it will help me to create contents thank you for listening and i'll see you in the next podcast i would like to send special thanks to patrons for their constant support through patreons.com slash kindle for life